This episode is brought to you by Indie Film Hustle Academy, where filmmakers and screenwriters go to learn from top Hollywood industry professionals. Learn more at ifhacademy.com. The thing I've always loved about your filmmaking in general is that it has a very specific energy. There is a kinetic energy to your films. Some more, some less. So like um, The Grey has a different kind of that energy. Um, But then I think the ultimate expression, and please correct me, the ultimate expression of the Carnahan kinetic energy is Smoking Aces. Like it is this... I think it was until boss level. <laughs> yeah, it, yeah. No, I was going to say boss level, yeah. boss level. It's, it looks it looks very – it has that thing. But the colors, the the, the amazing, ridiculous cast you had. Um, right, it's right. smoking aces. The kinetic energy. I was, I was remembering like when I saw it in the theater, it was just like I felt abused after I finished watching it. Like I felt physically assaulted right. by, the, by the visuals of it. It was visceral. And yeah. um, it was so visceral. It, like they launched with two, at least another two sequels, right? Yeah, yeah. It, it like just kept universal. Yeah, yeah. It yeah, did so buddy, well. Uh, yeah, buddy PJ Pesh directed one of them. Yeah, it was. A, it was one of those again. Dude, it was one of those. I think it was born out of my frustration about Mission Impossible Three and this idea that I wanted to do something that was just kind of almost like it's a mad, mad, mad world, right? This kind of you know, kind of zany. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, over the top kind of assault on a penthouse with this kind of you know, and this this weird magician kind of illusionist at the center of it and and this idea of inner of these interlocking inter interlapping stories overlapping stories that that were just kind of um uh again my kind of sense of humor and my sense of irony and my sense of the sardonic and all that weird shit and 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 it and it was also dude one of those movies i always felt that it was the outgoing regime at Universal, kind of their hand grenade in the incoming regime, because it was like it was working title. So I had I had the imprimatur of like you know of Eric Fellner and Tim Bevan, and then that they're really kind of high end, very British, very uh, very studied, very kind of wonderful uh, filmography uh, that they had put together, and and so they couldn't really say no. But the idea that you could do that movie now, Alex, that you could have. The no main way. character, or, or not even the main character, the main character by default because everybody else is dead. Unplug everything in this kind of nihilistic, and it's just funny. It's like the movie that I'm doing right now, Cop Shop. I say it's it's it, it's 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 absolute first cousin of Smoke and Aces, but it's not nihilistic. It actually has this great heart at its core. And it's probably just me getting older and softer, and and <laughs> and not needing to kind of you know uh, do the you know so so. You would never make that film now in a traditional studio ever, dude. They would never let you get away with no. that. So I always thought that we got one over on everybody because it was such a a downer ending, you know, mm-hmm. more or less. It wasn't a you know, it wasn't this uplifting kind of like the guy just fucking unplugs everything and sits there and you know disarms himself and throws his FBI credentials on the ground. That's that. It's like, and they let me, they let it go. Uh, it never happened now, dude. Ever, you know. Well, but, well smoking is, smoking aces would never get made today. Like you just. You know what's crazy? Of all the movies I've made, the one that's been the bonanza in residuals is Smoke and Aces. Hands down, dude. I've made more money after the fact on that movie than any other film. The A-Team, any of them. Like, that movie is so weirdly uh, – uh, and I get friends of mine going, dude, every time that fucking thing's on, I watch it. And I have movies like that. Like, I don't care where Jaws is, where Heat is, where, you know, Road Warrior, where Aliens, I'm watching. You know what I mean? It's like I'm in. Whatever it is, I'm in. Um and, and Predator, it's like I've got oh shit, man! Oh, they're gonna you know they're gonna you know they're gonna kill uh, Billy, you know, you know Sonny. It's like he's dead. Like I'm in there. So it, it, it's one of those the kind of the repeatability and the playability. I think is always something that uh, that it I've is. done. And visually, I think Morrow really was edgy in oh. the way to shot that thing. And to this day, I look at it and go, man, that thing looks like it shot last week. You know, and that's the great um, that it has a timeless quality to it. I love you know. And the cut doesn't and feel dated. At all. And the cut yeah. was insane. The cut right. was right. beautiful. Right. Right. right, right. So again, uh, uh, it's it was it's it's just one of those movies, dude. That that that, <laughs> and it was also misunderstood. Dude, same thing. It was like that movie was really for me about the war in Iraq. It was it was these, it was these, it was this kind of maniacal, insane levels of violence being leveled toward forces that we weren't quite. Uh, you know, weapons of mass destruction. Who are we fighting? Wait a minute. Did these guys, these guys weren't behind 
you know, uh, uh, 9 11, those guys were. Oh, no, they weren't. We went in Afghanistan. So it was this nutty kind of, And then at the end, the government decided, well, we cut a better deal and fuck you. And that's really what it was about. And I just think it was like, oh, it's just fucking crazy. And it's, and it, but but, I'll, but it's again, there, I'll never forget. David Denby wrote the most awful review of the film, but it was so entertaining. I love the review. It was such if you're going to get trashed, get trashed by a really good writer. <laughs> get trashed by a really good critic. <laughs> Not like Willy Waffle. Get trashed by Anthony Lane or, you know what I mean, A.O. Scott. Or get trashed by a really good writer. But but it was and again, I just think to this day, dude, it's there's so many fans of that movie after the fact. Yeah. It's just around. And it's weird. It just plays. 